Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to transfer outfits with the DAS to Unreal Bridge that have rigid follow nodes. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. I'll talk a little bit about that, but you might be familiar with the phenomenon that if you have an outfit that sort of looks like this in DAS Studio, the Blood Hunter outfit, for example, that has buttons on the front here. This is what it looks like inside DAS Studio. And once I transfer that into Unreal Engine, it sort of looks like that. So the outfit comes across, but the buttons are sort of all over the place and they're spun around, they're not in the right position, and that's, you know, that's terrible. So I'm gonna show you a way how to make that, how to make this transfer happen so that they look properly attached like this. So that's rigid follow nodes. And it's a feature inside DAS Studio that lets us make geometry that does not deform with anything that deforms underneath it. So in a concrete example here, if I have my shirt and I open that up, then I see these icons here and those are the rigid follow nodes. We have five of them. Sometimes you only have one, sometimes you have many more depending on how the clothing creator did this. The nodes themselves are often hidden. If they're not, then you see these little icons in the viewport here and that's always, if you ever see that, then that's a good indication that you have an outfit with rigid follow nodes. So let's go and hide these again. So the way this works is that if you open this up, you see that this is the actual button. So that's parented to the node and the node itself is something that is attached to a group of vertices or faces on the underlying geometry. So we have the shirt, there's some kind of selection on the shirt to which the node is attached. And no matter what happens to the underlying geometry here, it can deform, it can move, whatever's attached to it will just move with it, but it doesn't deform with it. That's the magic of it. So imagine a belt buckle, for example, that was, if that was part of the clothing and the character bends down, then the buckle would sort of collapse in on itself. And we don't want that. The buckle in real life would stay rigid hence the term rigid follow node. So the underlying person or the underlying outfit can deform, but the belt buckle does not. Whatever's attached to the node does not deform. But since this is a unique DAS Studio feature, when we export this with the DAS to Unreal Bridge, the geometry sort of comes across, but it's not in the right positions. And that's, that's a problem. So what we need to do then is a tip from Mara, actually. Thank you so much for this. This was just a thought example and Mara totally hit the nail on the head. We need to go and export the buttons out, then import them again as OBJs, run transfer utility and conform the buttons so that they come in with the item of clothing that we're using. So in a concrete example, because we're using transfer utility, I need to do this on my Genesis base character, not like in my case, this is Van Helsing. This is not the base character. This is a custom character. If I go to currently used, I see this and Van Helsing is in fact my character. So in my case, I can just go and dial this out to get my character. In fact, I'm going to go and favorite this dial so that I can easily bring it back. So if I go, you know, somewhere else and then go to currently used, since it is now zero, I don't know what I've just dialed out there, but if I go to favorites, there's that little heart icon there, I can easily bring Van Helsing back. So if this doesn't make sense to you, then the other option you have is just load the outfit onto a base character first and then prepare it and then load in your custom character, then transfer to Unreal Engine. Or if you already have an outfit, and you want to convert this character into the base character, just head over to your figures here and apply this character to that character. So if you double click it, then usually this dialog comes up and you can say, apply this character to the currently selected figure. That's the base character. Transfer utility will not work with already morphed figures. So now that we have that, let me go and make everything invisible so that I can just make the buttons visible. So control click on the eyeball icon here on my character that makes everything invisible. And then I'm going to go and control click on my shirt here on the eyeball icon that makes everything, including the buttons visible. And now I'm just going to go and click on this one more time, but without control. And that makes the whole outfit invisible, but leaves all the buttons intact. Let me go and export those out as they are. File export. I'm just going to call this buttons. I have one on my desktop here already that I'll override. That's all fine. I'm going to pick the DAS Studio scale and leave all the defaults intact. So that means everything that's visible in the viewport will be exported. So make sure nothing else is visible. Let's export that. And now I can go and make my shirt visible again. And I'm gonna go and remove all the buttons from my shirt. So I'll just select them and delete them. And now I'm gonna go and import this again. File import my buttons. Make sure that you use the same import scale that you used on export. So in my case, also DAS Studio, import those. And they appear to be in exactly the same position. That's correct, but they're no longer rigid follow nodes. They're now static geometry. 
So now comes the fun part with transfer utility. Usually we use that to transfer the rigging from one figure to another. Typically we make clothing, we have the clothing modeled in a modeler and we transfer the Genesis rigging over to the clothing. That's where we use that. We use that in a slightly different way now. So I'll right click on the scene tab, go to assets and bring up the transfer utility or do it in any other way that you're used to. In the source, I'm not going to use my figure here, my Genesis figure. I'm going to use the shirt because that's where I want to copy my rigging from. And the target is going to be my unrigged buttons here. There is something I just wanted to bring this to your attention that might work in a future version of that studio. There is this option here, reverse source shape from target that I think is supposed to be usable if you did have a custom character and you can just go and click that and then transfer utility would sort of calculate out the fact that it's not the base figure, but it's unclickable. So I don't know what uh, what happened here. Maybe that feature has been removed. Maybe it's in the process of being implemented, but I can tell you it's currently not working. So maybe in a future version it is working. Currently, you're going to have to use the Genesis base figure for that. And then you can leave everything else intact here and just hit accept. And that'll now turn my static buttons into rig buttons. As you can see here, different little icon. There's only one last thing that you may want to do. Usually when you import an OBJ, only the base texture will be imported, but nothing else. So I don't know if my buttons had something like a metallic effect on here that would not have been copied over. So in this case, you may have to go and find your outfit and just apply that material again. Or before you remove the buttons, uh, go and copy the surface and paste those onto the surfaces of your new buttons so that the material is intact. I think in my case, I just have that normal blood hunter material here, H material. Does this work? Has this changed? It hasn't really changed, has it? So I think maybe there was, was there a metallic effect on there? Let's just give it a metallic effect. <laughs> I don't even know if it has that. No, no, it didn't. So I think I want my buttons to be metallic. So that is something I would I would probably do, but it'll be you know outfit specific. So just in case that material got, got wiped out, just reapply it again. And then I can bring my character back and also bring the customization for it back. So that's my Van Helsing character that I'll bring in like that. And that's it. So now the buttons are no longer rigid follow nodes. I can go and export the character to Unreal Engine like this, and it'll come across just like I've shown you over here, the buttons will be in the right place. And this works with anything that has these rigid follow nodes, belt buckles, zippers, uh, as I said, sunglasses, anything that is attached and has these, these funky little icons that I've shown you in the beginning, those are rigid follow nodes. I hope you've learned something new and I hope you can now bring in every outfit that you desire over to Unreal Engine. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.